What's up everybody? This is Steven from TechMaker TV. This is building a link shortener with Ruby on Rails part 4. So at the end of the last episode we were looking at this algorithm that we had originally written and discussing how we really don't need to do all of this anymore. And I want to go ahead and just quickly refactor this out into something a little bit simpler. So if we run our Rails console We'll be able to do something, um, and you, you may or may not be familiar with this, but if you look up, there's this library called Secure Random, and you can just get a unique user ID, and it's just going to spit out these unique IDs like this. And so every time you call it, obviously you're getting a random user ID. So now that we have uh, model validation where our uh, link always has to have a unique token, and now that we're iterating over here with this lookup code, we don't need this sort of uh, extra work that we're doing here. So I just want to kind of replace all of this digest SHA-256 stuff with this secure random. So I'm going to go ahead and quit out of the console. And then over here, I'm just going to replace everything with up to the, the brackets with secure random dot uuid and let's run our tests and see if they're still passing uh, I need to spell rspec properly and they're still passing so let's talk about what we can do now so the reason we were passing in this iterator in the first place is because this SHA-52 method always gave us back the same string um, the same hex digest and so we were kind of just crawling down the hex digest to get a unique thing. Now this is a very strange thing that we did. It was just kind of iterating on one of our earlier ideas, but now we've totally invalidated that idea. We don't need to do that anymore. So instead of that, let's just always grab zero to six. So we're kind of back down to this simplistic thing. So now let's go ahead and run this again and see if we're still passing. And I took out too many characters here. Okay, so we're still green. So now what we can do is actually say, well, we really don't need this iterator anymore. And by the way, in the last episode, I messed up and said that iterator was a reserved word. In actual fact, this was just the letter I, and I was trying to take type iterator here, so iterator wasn't defined. In any case, we don't need it anymore. So we can kill that and delete that line. And our method should no longer take an argument. And so there we go. And let's see. You know, what we could do beyond that is we could just pass this method directly in right here. And in theory, not in theory, I mean, in actual fact, we could just like say that directly in there instead of get fresh code. But I kind of like the, uh, the intent behind the method name here. Um, so calling it get fresh code lets it, uh, somebody who's reading this code in the future know that we're looping and then every time we're getting a fresh code just in case we found the previous one. So now let's run the test one more time and see if we're still green. No break code unless, ah, now I see where I went wrong there. So let's just leave it like that. So this is why testing is great. Um, so in actual fact, we really need to put this in a variable here so that we can do this. So cool. All right. Well, let's just leave it there. I think this is clean enough and, um, yeah, so that's it for this video. It's a quick one. In the next video, we're going to get more into the front end side of things. So I will see you over there.